Welcome to the Body Project Podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Tanaka, a fitness expert and mindset coach, and the host and producer of this podcast, the Body Project Podcast. I help busy working women look and feel their best so they can live their most confident lives. In this podcast, we'll explore how physical and mindset practices can support you in becoming your most confident version of yourself. I believe that we can have it all. We can have our cake and eat it too. My hope is that this conversation shows you how simple habits can help you feel incredible and guide us to personal self-mastery. Join me as we explore how to live and feel our best in this lifetime, because this isn't a dress rehearsal. Welcome to today's conversation. I wanted to record this short episode for you today because I think this is an important conversation. The power of being able to trust yourself is really important in all aspects of our lives. But what I find with busy women that are sometimes also moms, when they're looking to optimize their health or when they're looking to get back on track with feeling good in their bodies, with their fitness, maybe shedding some extra body fat is the mindset is so important around what we say we're going to do. And the reason why holding ourselves, showing up for ourselves to do the things that we say we're going to do is because this is how you build self-trust. This is how our subconscious, that inner dialogue, believes what you say you're going to do is actually going to happen. What I find with busy women in their lives when they're looking to take something on and why the mindset is such an integral part of shifting who you are to who you're wanting to become, shifting from what you do to actually doing what you say you, you're going to do as opposed to starting again on Monday or waiting until you know, September, waiting till the new year, waiting until after certain things is that mindset of saying yes to yourself and holding yourself to those things. I often talk to this about this with my clients in my hundred day mind body transformation program. And we speak about this in the context of boundaries and the context of self-sabotage. Oftentimes we are excellent nurturers, women at giving to others, giving to our jobs, giving to our children, giving to our careers, giving to our partners, giving to our friends, often leaving nothing left for us. But one of those things is that we always show up for others. We show up for others. We show up for our neighbors. We show up when we say we're going to show up, right? Women are amazing nurturers. Their integrity level is very high. But when it comes to showing up for ourselves, we put ourselves last and we consistently let ourselves down. So even though there are, people are so confident that they're going to show up when they say they're going to show up, right? If you yourself are not confident that you will show up when you say you're going to show up for yourself, you know you'll do it for your friends. You know you'll do it with your, for your partners or for work for even our neighbors, for anybody and everybody around us. But if you know that you keep breaking your word with yourself, that is something to look at. Because in the context of improving our fitness, improving how we nourish our bodies, you know, doing the things that are actually going to shift the dial forward in fat loss, in optimizing our hormones, in optimizing our metabolism, in getting the results that we want to get leaner, to get stronger, to get fitter, to shed body fat, whatever your physique goals are, this is something to look at. Because if inherently, if your subconscious knows that you're really good at talking out of your ass to yourself. I know that feels a little bit crass, right? But that you say, okay, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to go out tonight, but I'm only going to have one drink or I'm not going to drink tonight or I'm going to just stick to the plan tonight. But then you get out and your friends are around and everyone's cheersing with, you know, a glass of something that you love that you're like, oh, it's fine. I'll just do, I'll start again tomorrow, right? Or if you know that you've been on this plan and you're like, I'm going to be really, you know, I'm going to stay on track this weekend. I'm going to be really mindful of my practices. I'm going to go get out for a walk. Even though I know my kids are going to want me to stay around all day, I'm going to put space in for 30 minutes for myself. 
and then the weekend happens and then your kids are like, come on, mommy. And your husband's like, do you really need to go? And you're like, fine, forget it. I just won't go. You say, I'll start Monday. Every single time you do that. It's just like that we would do that to our children or our bosses or our friends or our partners. If we kept promising things and then reneging, like, sorry, it's not going to work out for me. I can't do that today. Sorry, I know I promised that I would do that, but I just can't, right? Sorry, I promised that I would show up, but can we just rain check? If you kept doing that to a friend, if you kept doing to the that to a child, if you kept doing that to your boss, your boss would fire you, first of all. Your partner would no longer trust you and your child would no longer believe in you. You would not, they would not have that confidence that you're going to show up for them. And we are really good at showing up for others. But when it comes to ourselves, we consistently let ourselves down. And this is where this cycle of self-sabotage kind of shows up. And this is where this cycle of, you know, not having confidence in something, it often gets masked as a program. People will take on Weight Watchers or a transformation program like mine, or even a quick like 21 day kickstart. And they know, even though they desire to, they really want to make a shift. They keep letting themselves down. So the automatic pattern that keeps showing up is that they let themselves down or they're on track for two weeks, three weeks, and then they fall off the rails again. And so I share this because I was sharing this with a a client of mine yesterday about how do we actually get out of this pattern? How do we get out of this um, self-sabotage cycle that breaks down our confidence, breaks down our self-trust, which then puts us in this cycle of constantly yo-yoing or constantly being on again, off again, of being inconsistent. And what I want you to hear is that there is a possibility to shift this and that it is really important as we get older, as busy women getting into perimenopause and menopause, right? In our 40s and our 50s and our early 60s or even our late 30s, right? that these are the practices that will allow us to thrive through midlife. And the biggest thing you can start doing is the baby steps of keeping your word to yourself. And that literally is like the day yesterday saying, I'm going to go out for a 30 minute walk, making the plan, putting it in your schedule. I know for me, if it doesn't exist in my phone as a schedule, it will not happen. Right. And so for you, That's an integral part. How do you put something in place so that you will show up for yourself no matter what? Look, of course, life is all over the place. There are so many ebbs and flow. But if you can have non-negotiables every single day, like you do for work, like you do for food, like you do for coffee, like you do for partners, like you do for work or others, then you can start regaining that trust, right? It's like, With our kids, if we keep breaking our words, but we're like, you know what? Mommy's really going to be mindful about yelling. And every single time you're like, (gasps) and you pause and you're like, okay, recalibrate. How do I execute this in a way that I want? And then you're able to speak in a way that really feels loving. That is the practice. It is like waking up and saying, I'm going to do that 15 minute workout and being like, oh, but I'm tired. I didn't sleep well. My kids want me. I should make breakfast now. Maybe I'll check some emails all the things that get in our way, get up and do the thing. Start building that self-trust. It is in these baby steps that you can actually revolutionize your confidence, right? I've said this before. Confidence isn't a thing. It is not based on a number on the scale. It is not based on the size of your clothing. It is about keeping your word to yourself. That is how you build self-confidence and trust, right? Because if you're in it to win it no matter what, and you know you're going to show up because that is who you are for yourself and that is who you are becoming, that's how we can completely shift how you show up in your life. So ask yourself, how do you show up for yourself? How are you working on your confidence? How do you trust yourself? And if you don't trust yourself yet, I encourage you to take those steps to start trusting yourself and creating that space for awareness to notice where you don't trust yourself, where you pull back, where you misstep. Because when you start trusting your inner guidance, 
because you have an inner guidance, your wise self, that wisdom of your higher self, allowing that to come th- through, then that will allow you to say, okay, who am I becoming? What are those things that I need to put be putting in place that will support me, not only now, but in the future? So ask yourself that. I hope this serves you. I know it's a short podcast. Stay tuned next week as we step into the conversation of going from frumpy to fit, feeling your best in your body and what you can do starting today to get on track so that you can turn feeling frumpy, feeling soft, feeling flat, feeling not great in your body to feeling good and what that trajectory looks like and how to get you there. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you next week on this ep- the next episode. Bye for now.